talks in parts of that. He's only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got you going to do? I've got to do As far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? 31st of December, usually. Yeah. Do it the whole typical, way always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it too, and then. Uh, why do that? Why just why be conformist? Why why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty first? Weird that you should go. Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like look that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified <laughs> flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Mm. Yeah, I told her that I found out today that the days are about thirty six minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how. They are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right. Yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going. See you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going. Oh, another half hour. <laughs> they've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. Adds up over the years. Christ Almighty! What drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I that love it when Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she? her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. <laughs> oh god, what's wrong? And it starts off it starts off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, Oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh god. I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the gonna Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's one of my little pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> Susan, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine for my mum. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that oh, we you were. were. No, I, I well, you know. Were. You studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence of other worlds without men's pants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he rather he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but it, it you reminds want to be me. Right. You want to be specific. Of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Oh, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They're they're of course the they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. 
If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, can you get one to London? To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Carl, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> Christ, I'm like, plus posters and packaging, they're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite We're, stuff in we've here. We've got to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special CD? I I, I it just, it's amazing. You got you can't you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work, and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus! It's <laughs> always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira okay? We don't know. <laughs> Always been going to every news agency in London, looking at game magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed, though, because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. Oh, London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how like every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many. What noises. do you mean every noise has been used five <laughs> times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because I don't know. I have no idea. I've, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff. The same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking. Yeah, yeah. Some some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct outside yeah. an instrument. Yeah. Noises and are a byproduct. They a machine. They don't go. Watch me make this <laughs> noise. Make this machine. It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing but something. Why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the noise. Who's picking I know. The noise? A printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah. You so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going. Oh, can we make this make a different noise? No. It's it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it, and the way that that impacts on the uh, the surrounding air. That's what noise. You know how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson yeah, Rocket came, and I went. <laughs> I went. Can you make it go? <laughs> 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 no. It's what. That's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing, no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or... <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there there can't be so many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I don't know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, chimpanzee that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle is very yeah. similar to the monkey news jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. But just, be... Some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh great, it's monkey news, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any monkey news. Oh, I've got some good news about monkey news, actually. Have you? If you are craving monkey news, then there is a special monkey news poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show. It's got everything. It's got the 
the 12 shows and mp3 it's got the best of and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well and um, the reason we did it on cd is because uh, some people were saying i've heard about this but i can't listen to it i haven't got an ipod i haven't got a computer so uh, buy that for a friend who uh who can't listen to these it's the perfect thanksgiving gift it is the perfect thanksgiving gift or pancake tuesday <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, really. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> so we get, let's give those away again, the same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these, we'll send these no, to Rachel. Different ones. Them, you get so, so you get, do you, do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannimals of the Deep, okay? Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures, but that were taken by Rich Hardcastle, of, um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes. In their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We'll put some pictures up on the website. Go to wickedgervais.com and you'll see, you see what you could, uh, we'd be winning. Yeah. Yeah? So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff, but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um, okay, the, the, so, so those prizes, uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck. It's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition. Uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't know about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, let's stop for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Over a year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's... Looking back at the year... A year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on the windowsill. <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. Uh, I put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why uh, would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. No, and so some ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and, uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And, uh, I saw- Planned out. This is not <laughs> better. Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through, but with legs. 
and um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things, and they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. We got going, biscuit. biscuits over here. But I can't, that, what, <laughs> Come what, on, what, what was it, like I say, it was amazing because it was they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet not that far. They're, but but they still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird that that happened. I never thought that would happen in 2006. <laughs> And that's what, that's, <laughs> you never thought that would happen in 2006. That's what's He's nice, isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the na- you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see-through thing, you do. eating a biscuit, uh, that's, that's where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of a- anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's happening. But I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, a creature which you can't even identify or you name. don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that, how is that useful? Just because everything is, is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl thinks- Or where thinks, it happened or but, why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that, that the grub has an inkly, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl does. That's why yeah. he's from Ace. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it, they, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed to just being, yeah. it, it, taking the stars and the flower, yeah. exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But they're eating biscuit. <clears throat> and that was never meant to happen. So so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's going to happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park... Because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything. They're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now, over time, you know, they, they're going to cause more trouble than they what are now. What evidence have you got what that they're getting think? more violent? But Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky. They come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub, having a biscuit, everything's trying different food out. He'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on, on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Time makes you more intelligent. Well, no, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> It was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach to, uh, to some... I can't even bother explaining it, but but, uh, but that's what I'm saying, Everything everything's moving on. Yeah, but, but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man, it's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so old, God, a date. get a life, it. man. Hello, PlayStation 3, is yeah, hello. 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 Yesterday's cockroach. Oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. Get a life. <laughs> High five, Lee. I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stock in. You know, get a stocking. No, getting getting some condoms. What? Put over your head. No. You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, no I uh, I thought it was getting some condoms in. You know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season, and uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, and I was weird because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. 
because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it. Sort of because I thought that they, they would it, you had to open it. Try you know, it on. You, try it on. <laughs> exactly. Okay, they're just you know in case it doesn't fit. <laughs> exactly. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. Yeah. And, uh, and do you do to... alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, five pounds. <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to open this thing, and, and this guy who works there is sort of really middle-aged guy who works there. Who's you, you, know, you have to um, you have to take that to the uh, checkout, so you can't open that yourself. And I was just because I I don't know. I still find it very embarrassing. You know, dealing with any of that sort of you know prophylactics and things. The novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And uh, so I just left it. I thought, forget it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to take these to the counter because you never. It's like if you get served by a by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> you <know, laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. You're going to fill them up with war and throw them at students. <laughs> and um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about. When Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas, uh, was it a uh, two pack? A two pack of yeah. What was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously. That'd be that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 one for the kids. Yeah. Exactly. Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> um, but um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl. The famous uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really. They they were the early days. Um, Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with her for about eight years, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so, sorry. That was a bumper year, was it? That was that was a hell of a. She went. Oh, I remember. When, I remember when you used to buy me stuff like condoms. It's gone downhill since then. Well, no, she your didn't. No, she was getting them. What I mean is, there's less. Of course, prizes. she didn't. That's what that's what I mean though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult is what I mean to surprise someone in it over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't if if you're if you always get something good it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little baby <laughs> Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like Oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get, I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand? Because I don't want to criticise you because you're a lovely man. But having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, "Book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight," and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Because it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff. Is the expectations? I prefer it if I want to take Suzanne out. I prefer to meet her at the bus stop. And she comes back from work and go, "You want to go out?" But you don't Rather do that. Than, no, I do now and again. But it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da. It, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know, like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> That's a quote! <laughs> That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. Said, like I've said but a you lot. can't just spring it on someone. You have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th, for Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something. Now it isn't. No, they don't, I don't know what that means. No, 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 you just make up they, things they, say, they don't say. They say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines. When it isn't, <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy time. You're such a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a, it, out of all of those special days that go on, 
Christmas is the one but that's... But what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work. Yeah. And we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas again, that that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like um, Go on. holidays, when you know they're coming, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who surprises someone with a holiday how unless you, you win surprised? it on a game show? How can you really go? Bloody hell! I'm on holiday. Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, and nice. I went along with it, and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No. She won't like it as much, and I won't pick the right place, and I know she won't like it. You are one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, but up. it was a... Me uh, yeah, but to be honest, that's, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment, because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about himself like a crab! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just <laughs> He's 33 now and his knee's around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just my back's been playing up a bit and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But, hold on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at 33. Well, it's, it's definitely something, it's just not very good. Subsidence? I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not... <laughs> as good as it used to be. Please <laughs> wash it up. Rock and roll with me, David Bowie of uh, Diamond Dogs. Another one of my favourite tracks. Cracking. Great track, mm. isn't it? Mm. Well, it's time for um, Carl's Room 101. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real, but um, we thought that to end, end the, uh, the run of this with uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah, we, we, we know the thing he likes. We know that. So, uh, Carl, okay. we should just point out that we've uh, been inspired by the TV show Room 101. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room 102. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton, and you be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You could try to banish to Room 101 all those things that you dislike. No, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? Right. Who? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Carl. So, what's your first? What does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a right. on a table next to you. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like you know, picking five. It's like someone saying, pick your five favorite records and five favorite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard. So. You know in Desert Island Discs where they you you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible. Yeah. I think that you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there already in Room One One. They don't have to nominate you. You you always go in. <laughs> go on then, go on then. Uh, so, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's al I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> right. Yeah. First of all, right. I thought I thought of like uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like quotes and that that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That 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 quote that people say that uh, you know money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Right, we're just, we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That, that annoys me. What? Well, money the quote, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah, because it does, it clearly does. <laughs> 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 right. Without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah, good. Right, so, okay. so that's like a little short, short thing and, and, you know, then, then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week, I don't know if you saw it, Steve, the, the one, uh, Posh Lodi. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was great show. So annoying. Oh, yeah. There was a girl on there, right, who's from a, from a rich family and that, and, uh, you know, it's not her fault she's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me, because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you, if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change who's a person or whatever. Yeah, it's quite But true. this girl, right, um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, right? This girl goes shopping, she buys, like, four T-shirts and a crappy little handbag. 
Yeah. Spends about 1,300 quid. And she's just wasting it going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, oh, you love these, you know, they're really in fashion. She said, oh, whatever, I'll probably only wear them once anyway. And it's just, that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, you know, who have grafted for it are good. But like, um, you know, people who, who just get money given to them from the rich parents around the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she, she's like, got these big boots and stuff. <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, she's quite odd looking in that, right, but she's got a lot of money so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. Problem is, <laughs> she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter, I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone, yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want, you can have, like, your nice t-shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles and you can see... <laughs> I love the idea of God saying, <laughs> yeah. right, you can have all the toffees you want, yeah, and you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles, oh, God! <laughs> and, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money and she was calling up her dad saying, oh, daddy, is it all right if, I, you know, I'm just out shopping, I've just bought some shoes that, that have cost like a grand, mm. and I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop, just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, oh, hello, love, whatever her name is, lovely to see you here again, got some lovely new shoes in, got, look at these nice new boots, everyone's wearing them, Victoria Beckham, and, you know, all the it girls are wearing them, yeah, I try them on. Oh, you can't, because your ankles are so fat, <laughs> you can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind, here's some boots. <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person, You're but not. she, she brought it out of me. Oh, oh, I'm worried, though, this idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop, I'm not sure you're qualified. <laughs> I like the, all the, the, that's way round it, that yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd like to actually bother yeah. go through getting the job in the shop. Yeah. And then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels or her fat ankles. Yeah. Um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I have plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 da. And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 da. No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of a mother does that? <laughs> oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, you must know. Right. <laughs> no, they, do you know what I mean, though? Like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they'd draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit, and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh, yeah, and, and they're just ankles. It was just like two logs. People going to say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? They're leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> oh. Awful, so, you know. So, okay, so you're putting in f posh girls with fat ankles. Yeah. yeah okay, well, what's your next one? I'm in 101. Right, another quick one, really. You are. Um, people in supermarkets. <laughs> right. What, the people um, who serve? Yeah. Ma it's mainly... Um, these, these shops you get round in London that are like open 24 hours, right? Yeah. You'll go in and you'll buy your, your, you know, you don't do your main shop there, it's mainly just little bits in it, your, yeah. your carton of milk and, uh, sure. maybe a loaf, a couple of balm cakes and that. Yeah. And you go in there. <laughs> Who still buys balm cakes? <laughs> right? Do they have them in yeah, London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever Not ask? Would you be annoyed if I said balm cakes without those down here? They're rubbish. That's happened before when I asked for gravy and they didn't know what gravy was. <laughs> Gravy. In a chippy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you say? Have you got any gravy? Uh, just, just because you, you do, you, up north you have chips and pie and gravy on it. And yeah. I didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Right, okay. So that, that annoys me actually, stick that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, You've got fish men up north. But, but listen, right? <laughs> you, you'll go we saw a sign in the north, right? It was a little shop and the sign said, we sell bread. And it was, <laughs> it was handwritten. It was like, there was probably a, like a rush with those people in <laughs> exactly. turbans going, uh, What's this but, bread you talk of? Yeah. Little, little headscarves, <laughs> little women running down with their little, oh. <laughs> but anyway, these shops, right? So you go in there, getting your stuff, and you'll go up to the till, and they don't say hello to you. They, they don't sort of smile. They just bleep the stuff through. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you how much it is. They just sort of, expect you to look at the till to see how much it is. So yeah. You can get your hand in your pocket, give them the money, they'll give you the change, and they won't say goodbye. Yeah. So yeah. They, it's like they just can't be asked so. to have any sort of, hello, how are you doing? Yeah. I don't I don't want a big chat. I don't want to know what they're getting up to and sure. what, you know, what the dad does for a living and all that. I just want, <laughs> like, how are you doing? You know, you're well, right. Uh, oh, yeah, this, this bread's 
you know, popular or whatever. Uh, right, that'll be <laughs> five pounds. You, you, you need to keep abreast of which bread you're selling, well. <laughs> oh, Mother's Pride, that's a good choice. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, seventy percent of our whole stock. Is it? <laughs> so that really, not, even though you know, it is a twenty-four. I'll be song. honest. I, 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 I would err on the side of silence, not not rudeness. I hate rudeness if they do that. But I, I, I would rather, um, I'd start to go, uh, one pound fifty, please, and that'll be fine for me. Any more? What about uh, like, hello and goodbye? Have a good day. Not in an American way. It doesn't way. bother me. I, I mean, I, I prefer people who say have a nice day and and don't mean it to people who don't say it at all and don't mean it. To be honest, I, I'm, I'm I, I don't worry about that mock sincerity because I, th I think it. No, no, it, not it that. Does it's just job. normal, yeah. isn't it? Isn't no, no, no I mean, I, I'm saying I don't. I, don't I, I like people who say I don't care. They say, oh, nice to see you. Come again. Have a nice day. It doesn't bother me. But a chat. I, I, hate, I hate people who think they're the life and soul. No, 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 no. I, don't, don't mean like, I mean, like nuts. you know, if you go through a door, you hold it open, you go there, you go. You know what I mean? You yeah. expect a thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. not at all. Yeah, and also when when do you come in at the, uh, like a narrow walkway and you're both walking there and uh, I stop, we'll get out of the way and they tut like I should have. I want to go. Hold on, look, we're both in the same boat here. Yeah. And why is it me? Uh, that that annoys me where people oh, think they, when they're in the wrong. They own the street or <sighs> if, if if two people aren't looking where they're going, it's one yeah. person's fault. Yeah. That really annoys me. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. that so that's it really. I mean, I know the twenty four hour shops and the knackered and stuff, but. Politeness, just to say. Well, it costs nothing, does it? No. So, so those are your little quick ones. Then we get on to your, your big three, don't we? Ones. The big ones. Yeah, Should we play a record and come back to that? Well, no, what do you want? I'm, I'm talking to Carl Pilkington on room, room 101 on yeah. XFM 104.9. Yeah. What? New order. Oh, excellent. You know what I mean? No. He's mad. We were shouting at you then. How loud are those headphones? Uh. Pretty loud, but I'm always wearing headphones, so... Yeah, yeah but, but look, look, look what I'm doing, this is an old radio trick. You put one earphone over your ear and the other one off so you can hear people in the oh, room. So what, XFM 104.9. What did you want to say? Doesn't matter, Carl. It does, the it point really is, matter. it could have been important. It could have been a yeah, fire you, when, when we shout anything, you jump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Carl. All right. Get with the programme, all right? Hey? Eh? Right, what other things do you want to yes, room 101? <sighs> uh, other than us. Spiders. Right, go on. I know Ricky will yeah, be agreeing with yeah. this. All, all, all spiders, yeah. Just, I mean, not all spiders, because there's some spiders that are on the planet that don't do any harm. Uh, <laughs> they clean up stuff, don't they? <laughs> like a little brush. You mean janitor spiders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's some that, you know. <laughs> Hong Kong leggy. Just, just yeah. clean with stuff. But I'm talking about the spiders that are deadly. Right. And, uh, and spiders that are massive. I mean, Johnny's mate, uh, Ricky's mate, Johnny, I mean. Yeah. He was talking about how, uh, he was in Australia. Yeah. And he was sharing a, a room with, with a mate or whatever. And his mate was having a shower. And said, uh, Johnny, just, just come in here a minute. And he, he went in. And there was a spider on the side of the bath that he said was the size of your hand. Two yeah. hands width. It's sort of like a size track, just like eight inches across. Um, was... That big, right? And the daft thing with that one is that that can't kill you. It's massive. It's got no purpose. The it's a huntsman. Hunt. Yeah, but what? Uh, uh, something you said it does, right? If you sort of walk around it and it and it thinks you're going to try and trap it, it it hisses at you and jumps at you and jumps on you and sort of clings on. That's you'd be, terrifying. You'd be sort of running around trying to get it off and it's just gripping on like the old stag beetle thing yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's clinging on to you. <laughs> but there is no what I don't understand is why is that spider that big? <laughs> what? Because no doubt it, it uh, only eats stuff like normal spiders do, but it needs to eat more of them because it's it's a bigger lad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um it doesn't it doesn't actually do anything. It's not like I just, I just don't Doesn't care. create, doesn't paint, doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, it's just getting in the way, and it's one of those things that <laughs> are so big, you couldn't kill it, because can you imagine, like, the mess that yeah. would make something that size if you stamped on it? Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't get that. And then there was a program on a few weeks ago on BBC about spiders, and there was this one, right, it was going, you know, there's so many spiders in the world, and apparently there's so many of them, they can't give them all names. Right. What they're saying is, once one dies out, they'll actually introduce another one, because there's so many different breeds of them that it's impossible to sort of make a book and list them all. 
Right. Well, it's like the book would be infinitely long. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a queue. They They're not right. trying to name it individually, are they? No, no, no. That's their problem. <laughs> no, so yeah, 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 yeah. Just, Just keep it down ziggy. to the species. Go this on. Is, this is true, though. Go on, then, yeah. So, so they'll sort of go the, you know, the, it gives a spider, the Black Widow, right? Black Widow, they've all died, so, uh, who's next? And they'll say, here's a red back. Yeah. And that's, that's how they introduce them. So this program was going on about this. <laughs> that's right? not how they do it. No, they do do it. Okay. <laughs> Your point okay, right. right. So anyway, there's this little one, right, in Australia, and it shows you some kids being dead happy and playing around in the sun, loving it, you know, all healthy and that, and, you know, love being in the sun. They're playing around the pool and, you know, there's a couple of them there playing swing ball and that, dead happy, not a care in the world. And, like, the one of them goes, oh, I'll go swimming, because yeah. I've been playing swing ball for an hour, got a bit of a sweat. Sure. Go for a little uh, breaststroke or whatever. And uh, they, they get in the in the pool, and they can't wait to have a swim about. And then it pans to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. And there's this little spider just sat there dead still. Right? Sat at the bottom of the pool holding its breath. Holding its breath? Okay. <laughs> ah! Cheeks going up red, yeah, eyes bulging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight pairs of goggles on. <laughs> One goes by with a snorkel. You can look this. <laughs> Four pairs of flippers. Yeah. Oh, he sat there in the deep end, right? And it's and like he, and then it pans back to the kids having a good time, chucking the ball to each other. Mm. I can see what's going to happen here. <laughs> and it pans back. It's not going to join in the game, is it? <laughs> no. And what happens is. The kid starts bouncing up and down on the floor. Sure. Goes and sticks its, uh, the kid goes and puts a foot on the spider. <laughs> bites the kid, and apparently, if you're not seen to, you can be dead in 15 minutes. Sorry, well, sorry, why does this spider sit at the bottom of the pool? That's what it likes to do. <laughs> Animals don't do things they like to do. <laughs> Animals do things for a reason. Waiting for a kid to come along to <laughs> No! It doesn't make any sense! It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, that's, that's what it's not, it's not, it doesn't go out to murder kids. That's not, <laughs> it, that's not what it does. No, there must be a reason. It, 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 I mean, if you just stopped when you watch these programs and don't get involved with the music <laughs> and like, you know, the odd, why does it sit at the bottom of the pool? There must be a reason. It either goes there for protection, food, to cool, it does it for a reason. It doesn't go there to wind up swimmers. Yeah. There uh, must be a reason this is it if anyone's watching please if you're watching that program I don't know I don't know about this spider what what what's the name of the spider I'm not, I'm not sure okay well, it, it did oh, say... eight, 700, 800, one, two, three, is it four. the Duncan Goodhue? <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 is it is it for I mean I don't know maybe it does go into other things like ponds and that and maybe it does the same to ducks if a duck stands on it but why <laughs> <laughs> stands on it. Uh, why? Oh, I love your brain. Probably because it, eventually, uh, you know, a kid can get like saved if it's if it's seen to in fifteen minutes. But a duck is just gonna like wander around and go, God, I don't feel well, and what have you. <laughs> It, what good is that to the spider? Because... No, I'm saying it might kill it if it might protect itself, but it must be in the pond for a reason in the first place, or the swimming pool. It must be down there for a reason. It must have... Could it must have another agenda, evolutionary-wise. It can't just do it. Could it be in training for the Olympics? <laughs> Unless it is just cooling. Like, like those, um, cause on, on one of the other programs that, that's a bit mental, um, <laughs> oh yeah, that you, one, yeah. The one, the one with the lizards, <laughs> with the tail. Well, let's not get into lizards, this could okay, take... Okay, no, go on, we'll no, no, this is a good one. It was, it was a program, BBC program again, on how insects and animals help each other out. Yeah. Right, they were saying how, you know, you might think they're in an insect, but they think like humans do, yeah. and they all help each other out, <laughs> right? And there was this, this lizard that, um, is running about in the desert, Right, and it's going. God, it's roasting. And what it does, it it makes a little <laughs> hole in the sand, and it goes under the ground and it cools down. Right. Yeah. And then you see one of the locals. I think it was in, in Egypt or something, and the Egypt bloke comes walking along. The Egypt yeah. bloke. And uh, <laughs> is he walking like an Egypt bloke? <laughs> yeah, I walk like an Egypt bloke. <laughs> and, and what oh. he does, right? He, he's looking out for these holes in the ground. Sure. And he sticks his hand in. Yeah. And he Why does he want the lizard? He, he makes shoes and stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And you see, Cobblers. you see, walking around, he's got about twelve of these things in a basket on his back, and they're yeah. all looking really fed up. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's dead hot, and they can't be bothered trying to escape, and they look really fed up. And this bloke's laughing, you know, he's collecting loads. <laughs> I love how he watches this, like, because they sort of uh, editorialise it and make it into like some exactly. sort of like evil play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no. well, then, <laughs> d d d d d but then it was saying how this deadly scorpion that man is scared of is mates with the lizard. <laughs> 
And the reason is that the scorpion <laughs> goes into the hole, right? It can't dig its own hole because its arms are that big and it's awkward for it to dig to dig a proper hole. Sure. So what it does, it goes into the, the, the like the little den that the lizards made, right? And um, whilst the lizards having a kip, the scorpion says, "I tell you what, I'll do you a deal. You have a kip. <laughs> I'll walk up and down this hole here and, and, and sort of scare away any people." So the lizard's like, "Yeah, all right then, fair enough." Because the scorpion wants a little hole to keep out of the sun. The lizard wants a kip. They've done themselves a little deal. The Egyptian bloke comes walking along, sticks his hand in the hole. Yeah. He thinks he's just going to get a lizard. Scorpion stings him. He runs off, drops the basket. All the lizards go running off. I love that. That, that is what always happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, feel yeah. that just by yeah, chance. Exactly. That's what all. Always happens. I like the fact that the, the Egyptian bloke uh, has done this every day. He does it. He goes, well, okay, I've got all these lizards. Um, I'll just go to this hole again. Yeah. Because I haven't got that lizard yet. Yeah. This would be fine. No, I just, I, I just think. And yeah. when the when the lizard and the scorpion make that deal, and he says, you have a kip. Yeah. And the other one does it. Do they talk in Egypt or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they talk Egypt how do they, how do they discuss? They talk Egypt bloke or English bloke. What language do they use, Carl? Uh, no, it's the, but it's the international language of love. But spi yeah. spiders is what you're putting in Room 101. Spiders. Let's go back to that. Oh, spiders, spiders, so, so spiders, spiders that... Basically, spiders that have got the poison to kill a man. Because, Rick, I know, because you okay. Okay. But Rick, I know you What are the ones that are just too big for their own good? So, you know, those I are don't them. understand that either. But Rick, <laughs> but yeah. Rick you're... you're you're scared of all spiders, aren't you? Right? Yeah. Even the little tiny ones you find. I don't like any spiders, yeah. Is, is your husband afraid of them as well? Or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh dear. What are we playing here? Uh, what are we playing here? Oh, this is Cat Stevens. Silent Sunlight's beautiful off Catch Bullet 4 at its peak in the 70s. Silent. Oh, Cat Stevens, Silent Sunlight. Yep. Um, um, Carl just had a, a funny phone call, didn't you? From someone who's telling you all about the. The little brown, it's called, is it? Little brown, yeah. That's the yeah. name of the spider that sits in the bottom of the pool. He said it doesn't hold its breath. <laughs> it's got uh, an air bubble. <laughs> I didn't think it did hold its breath, to be honest. Uh, and then, as you know, Steve was opening a, a letter we got, and it's a football song, and it's they don't like it up by the Leatherhead Gimpers. But it's just it's the fact we keep we keep getting sent <laughs> homemade singles. Uh, wow, that's good, isn't it? Oh, there's another one here. Uh, They're both football anthems, though. We don't. Well, do we show any interest in football? Are we? Well, well, we well, yeah, the World Cup. We do, don't we? <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got a bet on as well. Have you? Arsenal, uh, uh, Chelsea to win two one. What today? Yeah, mm. and I've got Chelsea to win two one, but Henri to score first, and that's that's something like thirty to one or something. Best of luck. Best yeah. Luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Right, so spiders, that's the first one we went on, isn't it? So you rude people in supermarkets, rude people in supermarkets, spiders that are either can, have got enough poison to kill a man or are unnecessarily big. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Right, good. Going well. Right. Uh, next one. Yeah. Stars in their eyes. <laughs> Blimey, it's a popular show. Can't you might alienate a lot of people. Stand it. Um, why? Um, why? Just, I think, if, if you've got a talent, right? Um,. There's loads of shows now that you can go on and make a killing. Yeah. Like Pop Idol. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Pop Stars. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, people who will go on Stars in Their Eyes, they, they want to sort of be famous. Yeah. Um, they want to be a singer. What I don't understand is why go on that show where you do all the hard work, gotta do all the graft. Yeah. Uh, and yet, even if they win it, you never see them again. The guy who won. Last year, uh, Chris de Berg. Ian Moore. Uh, Ian Moore. Before oh. last. But I was now with his own stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. <laughs> How did he say <laughs> that? sold well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't well, get it. What I like is when, uh, someone doing Edith Piav, like, wins a heat, and, uh, Matthew goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the, uh, cleaning job, will you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you will. Monday. <laughs> Almost certainly. Monday. She'll be back there Monday. Just, yeah. uh, and, and just the way, you know, in like the final last week where the guy who was Elvis won, and they're I all thought he there. would though, I thought he was very good. No, he was good, uh. but will we see him again? Do you know what I mean? I, what, what is his job? I don't know. He'll be carrying on doing that, and there's, there's, there's gonna be no change to his life whatsoever. He's very good at what he does, but he's wasting his time on Stars and the Rise. <laughs> so what's, I don't understand exactly what your issue is. You, you clearly like the show because you watched the final last week. He thinks, he, I, you I think agree he thinks, that people are talented. You think it's a waste of talent to go on Stars and the Rise because it's not a vehicle to be famous, whereas something like... Pop Idol, yeah. Pop Stars, even yeah. Big Brother. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on that. Sit in a room all day, have a month off work. Because they're, they're all big stars now, aren't they? No, 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 but what I'm saying is, it's less work to sit in the Big Brother house 
now and again, just sing a song. And people go, oh, isn't he a good singer? You come out after having a, a month's rest or whatever it is you're having there. Yeah. You come out and there's loads of record companies, like, waiting for you to come out and give you a deal. And what happens then? When and you get a deal, when you cut a record, what happens to that record then? Then it either sells or it doesn't. Uh, and, and actually, what happened to it? Uh, it didn't, it didn't sell. No, none of them did. But what I'm saying is, that is a lot easier to do than to all the graft that you have to do on Stars on the Rise and the pressure. What would you rather do? Buy Craig's Christmas record? Yeah. Or, um, Ian Moore's, uh, classics? Probably Craig, just because the guy on Stars on the Rise really thought he was better than Christopher. When he was singing, and I think I'm better than Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> He was singing and Chris, Chris de Burr came walking on. Did he cry? And he didn't stop and go, oh, I can't believe it, my big fan. He was sort of carrying on, like, don't interrupt me, I'll have a word with you in a bit. <laughs> yeah. You think you should show the man he's actually making a little bit of living off? Yeah. Emulating. A bit of respect. A bit more respect. And the most annoying thing. I imagine them arguing, resting each other's floor, saying, I'm Chris de Burr. No, I'm Chris de Burr. Like two ventriloquist dummies. Mm. Just having a fight in the dressing room afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> well, the most annoying thing of all with stars in their eyes, people who go on, and do people like, um, say like, I think, I think last, last year, someone went on and did Lamar. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you wanna, cause the, the whole idea with Stars in the Rise, you get work off the back of that show by, like, companies, don't you say? Yeah. Let who will we book? Yeah. You could get the real Lamar for about 30 quid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why, why have an imitator? Well, it seems to me, though, Carl, the problem is that show's been running so long that all the big names have already been done, so it's gonna end up having to be, isn't it, Lamal or some yeah. old kind of 50s thing you've never heard of? Isn't that the problem? I remember when... I mean, it's uh, just an... It's just a, Eddie Reader was yeah, on there. Yeah, there was yeah. a movie about Eddie Reader. But it's uh, just a karaoke contest. It's just... It, I yeah. don't think... I think you're assuming that everyone on there wants to get, uh, yeah, you know, a recording they do, contract. They do, Steve. Okay. In, in that bit at the back where they say, uh, and the votes are coming in, let's have a look at the tension now that's going on, and they sat there and they really think they are Elvis. <laughs> and they are Luther Mandross. <laughs> <laughs> sat there and, like, if, if they were all sat there having Woke a Woke up this morning, looked at your picture just to get me started. <laughs> Filth. If they were all sat there, sort of thinking, oh god, this is a bit of a laugh, isn't it? But they're not, you can see that they all really want it. And it's like... So what I'm saying is, who are you putting in Room 101? Are you putting in the people who are just there to have a bit of fun? Everyone involved in that show. Including Kelly? Yeah. He's a talented guy. You yeah. don't care? No, he's, he's, going in he's well. in there first, and then everyone else, everyone who enters it, the people who go and sit in the audience, everything. But it's, what would you do Saturday night? You'd love the show, you'd watch it every no, week. I, he was just on when I was getting ready to go out, and there's nothing else on at that time. Sure. And it was the final on Saturday night as well. Yeah, you got to watch the final, you know, the final. Yeah. final. Yeah. Well, who would you do if you went on the show? <laughs> Moby. I'd probably do. Ooh. It's not. It's not that you look like them, though, is it? No, so you saying like they wouldn't let me on as Tracy Chapman. I was furious. That's right. Because I sound just like her, but they said, mm. no. Bowie. Bowie. You do Bowie. Yeah. Can I hear your impression? No. Nope. Well, come on. No, no, because you just said if you could go on and, and what have you. I'm, I'm saying that. Well, it's got to be someone you can do. I mean, obviously, I'd go on as Will Smith because I can do the rapping. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not a good singer. I've never, never really been into singing. I've never done a live singing thing before. Haven't you? No. no but if you, if there was a talent, if there was a talent show, if what there was a do? talent show, what did you do? I did walk like an Egyptian by the Bengals and a mind, dressed up as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, it was when I was still going to school, so it was like. Well, I hope so. Twelve. And what? Well, sorry, what was the? What? Why did you do? That. What did you mime to, and why were you dressed as a woman? <laughs> Where's the logic in this? Is what I'm saying, Carl. What what sort um, of act was this? Was I think, it? I think <laughs> I was meant to get hold of some like Egyptian outfit. <laughs> Couldn't. <laughs> so I looked in my mum's wardrobe, and I had a dress. Dress got, dress in a fez, carrying got, some lizards. That'd do it, wouldn't it? I had some boots and a wig on. And <laughs> And how did you dance? <laughs> he looks confused! He's confused suddenly by his own act. He's suddenly confused! The best bit was I also, it was like a, a proper talent show, do you know where you cover it all? Yeah. So I did like the dancing and the miming, and then I also did a bit of magic, right? <laughs> where I had like a cloth, <laughs> right? And, and I had it over my hand like that, and, and the crowd were like, oh god, what's he gonna do? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, of course they were. Go on, and what did they, and what was the and trick? They were playing that. <laughs> the crowd going, oh, what, what's the great <laughs> pil- one chorus? Ooh, what's oh, what's she gonna do? Oh, what's the great Pilconi <laughs> gonna do? So, oh. so, so what I did was, <laughs> I stood there teasing them. And, um, teasing the audience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I pulled the, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear before your very eyes. <laughs> okay. And I pulled the, the tea towel <laughs> off and I just had hold of an egg. <laughs> and I said, oh, it isn't born yet. <laughs> they loved it. Did He's they? so they proud it. of that! Did you come up with that yourself? Yeah. Did you have any help at all? <gasps> no, no. So sort of you did walk like an Egyptian and dress as a woman. Then you did the egg trick. And yeah. Then, and then I was also playing like a, a janitor, because when the next person was singing, <laughs> I'd come on and all the electric went off, and uh, I came on going, "Oh God, has anyone got fifty p for the meter?" Oh, you're quite a little show showman, weren't you? And then, like, you know, the did you win? Chucked, chucked to some money. And, yeah. Uh, Are you sure you weren't actually employed as the janitor? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you win? No, I think we came second. Some this this really tarty girl who did Madonna like a virgin, and I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you are. She was a right ropey little woman. <laughs> But, uh... <laughs> so great! <laughs> oh, oh, okay, brilliant. so Spider Stars and Eyes, we better play a, a track, hadn't we? Oh, indeed, yeah. A bit of Tom McRae, this was a track we played a while back, I enjoyed it. Tom McRae, End of the World News. Yeah, I love that one, I hope you enjoy the music, we're loving it, aren't we? Indeed. Still to come, we've got, uh, another entry to Room 101, Carl's final entry, and then that, um, giveaway, the famous giveaway with, uh, Enhance Carl's Life. Can I ask you an advert though first, Carl, cos I'm oh, getting a little fed up with adverts for a little while. Bad evening, boy, once around the block. Classic, a retro cut. Getting a bit sad now, Steve, 20 minutes. Indeed. You're it's, right. I've got so much to say, I've got so much to leave people with about Carl, about all the things he's, he's done. Looking back, Carl, do you remember when I put up the waste paper bin on your head? Oh, oh, classic. Classic yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? What did I do to you today? Well, you tried to bring the same memories flooding back to me by putting the same grotty bin on me head. But the annoying thing was, <laughs> last time I did it, it was quite a new bin. Yeah. Did it today. It's rank. All yeah. sorts of stuff on it. What else do I do when you sweep you around the corner down there? It's gone. I went, I went to get the paperwork and that like you need to produce the show. Yeah. And, uh, came around the corner, Ricky was sort of hiding. And I was concentrating, reading <laughs> stuff, and he goes, <laughs> I don't imagine it was as soft and gentle as that. I imagine it was more like, <laughs> exactly. Like that. And he, I tell you what, I nearly exploded because he's sort of hot on one leg, right? <laughs> and the, <it> was, <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he's sort of walking that along, we're looking down, and I went, eh, and he got like that, and he went, <laughs> Uh, rest assured, oh. listeners, that if you were here, it's not any funnier than it is if you were listening at home. It's only amusing to Ricky. But oh! You, it it oh. makes you feel really refreshed. <laughs> what he, a... he was going on and having a heart attack like that. And I was, I was only having a heart attack laughing. And he went, I feel good now. He said, I can see why people skydive. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that would be good for people that were ill. Oh, Carl! Oh! They've, they've made a feel. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live without Carl for 14 weeks? Oh, you'll find other people to irritate. Oh dear, okay, so, uh, right, well, um, we got this, this final entry in Room 101, but we've also, um, had m- uh, so many emails and letters about this competition, people trying to bribe you with things. I've been great. Can you read a few more? Absolutely, yeah. Well, obviously, this is, uh, people are trying to win this, uh, bag that we got signed at the BAFTAs. We've got Graham Norton, Angus Dayton, Alan Davis, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse, Baxendale, Helen, Steve Filmich, and McFadden, Peter Davis, and Simon Pegg, Steve Rowe, all different people signing the big bag. Do you know what I think, though? Oh. I don't think people want that. I think they want to contribute to Carl's existence. Well, this is I what... really genuinely think that Carl was sort of, you've, you've, you've you know, you've only been, how long have we been doing this now with you, sort of like, you know, in the area? Three months? Yes. Yeah, I think months. you've, I think you've touched people's lives, Carl. I don't think I've ever met, well, I haven't met you, but this, it, I think your soul comes across as like a cross between, I'd put it, he's like a cross between a cat. And yeah. Rain Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, we've had quite a few which are, uh, 
uh, sort of, which obviously wants to kind of further your education. Obviously, when we're off air, this is something we, we're, we're worried that's just going to dry up, you know, and, and we've tried hard to educate you. So, lots of books, lots of people suggesting books, um, the giant book of mysteries. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you chose this one, Carl, it uh, tells you um, how 3,000 Japanese soldiers literally vanished overnight, real life accounts Ooh. of vampires, uh, the man who planned his own crucifixion, Ooh. the famous Carl. Ghostbuster, Harry Price, oh. um, and Ooh. lots of uh, things it, about spontaneous combustion. Is this like. the one about the one with the hairball? That's not got the one in the hairball in there. I'll have see, to do that these, these sort of books are the thing that I'm after. This is what well, I've, 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 I've brought in one as well. It's a, it's a, a friend who works with um, Jane, my girlfriend, called Liz, and she wants to put this forward. And this is trade secrets: everything you will ever need to know about everything. And it's just like little tips. You know mm. what I mean? But there's so many things competing with that. You see, there's another guy you sent in. He wants to give you uh, a video entitled "Making Love: Parts One and Two: An Instructional Guide." I imagine mm. you'd enjoy that, Carl. No. Nah. No? Nothing they can teach you? No. Nah. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts again. Other stuff here. Why cats have nine lives, Carl? Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this In this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> but don't plug it in. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> what about this then, Carl? Because, uh, obviously we're concerned that you didn't get your GCSEs or you didn't get as many as you'd have hoped. There's yeah. a guy here, this is Victoria, and she's saying she's more than willing to give you all of her awards and certificates. She's got six GCSEs, six A's and four, but she's got many GCSEs, in fact, six A's, four B's, three A-levels, and a master's degree in philosophy. She's willing to give you those certificates. She says you will be the proud owner of qualifications. As the owner of qualifications, she has found that anything she says is invariably believed and that she's popular and very happy. She's yeah. willing to give you those qualifications. That's pretty impressive. You can claim they're your own. You have to change your name to Victoria, but other than that, I can see no problems. Yeah, and you have to put a dress on, uh, yeah. Fez. It's not a <laughs> <laughs> More like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there's lots of educational ones. Then there's other things which are perhaps less useful to you. Um, this is, uh, doesn't, doesn't say who it's from, but, uh, I think it's Ruth, and she's happy to give you a statue of an ostrich that she made when she was seven. What about that? Hey. All right, you love birds, you love animals. Yeah, um, it's apparently a statue. the legs fell off under the weight of the body, <laughs> so now it's just a legless ostrich. But even so, yeah, even so, I've only got a small flat. Mm. Sure, another woman here. She, uh, this I doubt if it's ostrich size. Yeah, it's it's just clogging up space, though, isn't it? This okay. is Lauren. She's willing to give you some of her handmade blue tack animals. She makes animals out of blue tack. She can give you an elephant, a seahorse, a tortoise, a pig, a butterfly, a fish, snail, even a stegosaurus, or anything you choose. See, I've got, I've got my art set on. You've got the books. You're excited about the books. Book. What about this though? This is a Lego alarm clock with a little Lego man who's got a variety of hats. It says here, including biker's helmet and cap. Two, I think, of the village people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, Carl. If again, people are picking certain things up. A clear stiletto mobile phone holder with pink fur on it flashes pink and green. I, I think people know that you are not okay. listening. In this you book, okay. listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. To one ear about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it. Ring the doorbell, right? So you've got to get off your chair, <laughs> go and ring the doorbell, so the dog goes, "What's that?" And it, dro <laughs> it, it, dro it drops the remote control, goes running to the door. Yeah. You, you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that. And then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it yeah. sits back down. And Carl going, "Oh no, not again!" <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want. Can't I just have this? You excited by that? Are you? It's brilliant. What about this one, though, that you mentioned? This is, uh, a book which has got all those, um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet, and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there. I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Eh? All right. It's not all right. So basically, that she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, oh, it's not true, you can dispute, dispute that with your, your book. Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts? There's so much stuff, back? isn't there? Should you play a record and then come back? <sighs> Can't. Have you found something you like in there? You're I'm so undecided, Carl. I really like this book. Go on, and what is it? What have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for helpful helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that. You know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about, 
Yeah, because they're pointless. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then we'll just play a record. Oh, there's so many to decide on. Yeah. All right, what are we playing, Steve? This is something um, from a little compilation that came free with a magazine called Comes With a Smile. It's a good little magazine. And this is uh, by Matt Pond, PA. It's called Night's End. It's not... I suppose it's a little bit of New Country, which we don't play often, but uh, there's some nice tracks no, floating about. Nice. And that's uh, Matt nice. Pond, PA, Night's well, End. Well, I'm getting very sad now. Ten minutes to go mm -hmm. and so much to cram in. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners, so I don't think you can have it. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'll, I'll get, I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you. So you can have that anyway. What, what have That's you safe. You're going home with that. Yeah. What have you, avoid washing up by boiling a bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can see why you'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything else? What, 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 what other things have you caught your eye, though? Put that uh, book down. Yeah, go on. Go on. Um, well, well, one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got, like, 180 stories in it. Um, some, I mean, most of them are, like, true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Because she liked the way... And she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in the microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in the microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. Sure. She thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just, like, went modern? Apparently, it's like what punks used to do. You can get, you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hair dryer. Right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well, I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. She... Busy, she was busy, I she was late. I don't understand how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell. I don't think it's possible, but don't. Of course it is. Yeah, well, well don't. Anyway, but he's, do he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's, that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? And, uh, she used to always mess around with it. And, um, she's sucking on it. Do you know, like, how girls, girls do with the, with the long hair, they sort of yeah, mess yeah. around with it and stuff. Yeah. And she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of, like, ten. Mm. And then, I don't know, she's probably about thirty-odd. And, uh, she's doing this all the time. Guessing. And, uh, she goes, oh, God, my belly's hurting today, Mum. And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. You're thirty. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors. And the doctors do an x-ray and nothing's coming up and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. She's like, no, honestly. <laughs> He's a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she said, this is- Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this uh, is really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they, they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what, what was going on. Yeah. And apparently- X-rays? No, it wasn't x-ray, cause x-ray didn't show it up. Okay. It was something else. So, uh, anyway. It's only gone and turned into, like, she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits had come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. Wow. Right? Yeah. Which was, like, huge, the size of a rat or something like that, right? The size of a... <laughs> it's so like interesting that. what he chose. Yeah. The size yeah. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is, when, when they eventually got it out, yeah. the, the mum was like, you know, oh, God, it was terrible. And that's what she actually said. It looked like a dead rat. Oh. Right. And it was in her belly, and that's, like, what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently, your, your belly acids don't, um, uh. don't, don't kill hairs, because they're so fine, it can't handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right, I so you, you go for that book, are you? That's the one I want, Who's yeah. the winner, then? Who's the winner of the, the lovely BAFTA What's bag? What's name there? Richard Scholar, is it or something? Yeah, Richard, uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler, yeah. or something else. So he's the winner, so check it out, you're gonna get that book coming to you. I'll get that, I'll borrow this book but for I you. I need oh. an email within, like, five working days to sort of... So what's your email? It's carl.pilkington at yeah. uk. Okay, lovely. I want an email from this guy, oh. and I won't be sending the bag out until I receive the goods. Okay, <laughs> right, Fair good. Enough. Well, we've only got a few minutes. I want to play Swade, and I want to end with the Smith track, so let's let's play this. What is it? Swade, stay together. Lovely track. My favourite tw Swade track of all time there. Well, we're... we're, we're oh, that's nearly it, Carl. Right, what's your last room 101? Oh, God. It was, uh, holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in room 101? People who are sort of annoying on holiday. Oh, yeah. Do you know when you go away... Oh, yeah. It's sort of touched on this before. Is, it, is this going to be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long, though. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. 
<laughs> and the scouts have pissed you off. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one. We spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for, like, a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell, like, the blinds and stuff as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff. And you well, let's make the most of it. You know, let's not let's not get down about it. It's, it's a holiday. It's sure. for a rest. And you try and make the most of it. And we had to meet. Do you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that. Go and sort yourself out in the room. And uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at 10 o'clock and I'll go through, you know, the, the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best <laughs> deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Could anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning meet 10 o'clock in the discotheque. So we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast. Uh, the kitchen was like... Bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good, and it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? Not there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around, and the annoying thing was, one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> How did he manifest his, his affection? For no, you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? Just no, saying no, it was no, strange that there was yeah, a. Even midgets shouldn't be cleaning on, on cars. <laughs> no, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of, you know, they've got little fingers, and. I don't and it's oh sort of God, I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. It's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh God. But the annoying thing is. So what was he doing then? How did he? I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? He just kept <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it. Just you know. Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, there's not oh, many. Oh. What's going to happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh, 